everyone. Um, the chapter that we are going to discuss today is on flow of information, how information flows throughout the supply chain. So on completion of this module, I expect you all to know about the following, um, which is your types of information around production and delivery demands. Also to get a perspective on um, the value of collaborating with internal and external vendors, also around uh, data management practices, how do you evaluate them um, in order to increase the speed and reliability of the global fashion supply chain. When I'm saying fashion, I mean obviously both um, fashion, clothing, textile, retail, all of it that falls within our industry. And then we compare different um, information management strategies to reduce supply chain risk or um, compare in terms of how do we know what is going to work best for our company. Okay, so let's start. When we speak about supply chain data, now remember when we're speaking about information, we are speaking about data. So the kind of competitive business has been um, brands are trying to work around creating supply chains that have speed, that have agility and that have or that has an ability to practice a customer centric approach when it comes to delivery, when it comes to production practices, any of it. So um, teams or any, say, for example, the design teams, they are also able to speed up the design process by making decisions quickly when it comes to fabric selections. So overall, if we see companies or brands, they need to speed up the process. Um, they need to build supply chain networks and on building these networks, they need to enable flow of information. Now, what kind of information? Information relating to production, starting from production until delivery of the product to the final consumer. Um, if you would recall um, what we have spoken about earlier, most of the times, the most amount of data that is generated happens during production, happens during warehouse, which is where we store or the timeline that we store our products and then during the distribution process. Um, so while we are doing that, um, there are many uses for supply chain data. Some of them would be the ability to access, the ability to use supply chain data. Now it depends if we're using it company-wide or if we're using it department-specific. What um, leads to failure at times is silo mentality where people think they want to keep the information to themselves. What they forget is this is about company, this is about a product or this is about business as such. Um, also, that silo mentality leads to challenges around data collection. And all these speaks to what? It speaks to um, the lack of taking um, leadership roles or the lack of a leadership perspective. And this overall puts an impact of applying data. Now, this here is a very nice table that includes information like your fabric availability. It includes information around SKUs, around markdown percentages. So it would, for example, if you see in this table, it shows that the finished goods delivery timing is used by both marketing and store operations. Now that same information, marketing is using that to plan when the advertising should occur for the product promotions then store operations are using the same information also to plan the new inventory delivery dates um, for the stores. So if you see both depart departments, they are using the same data, but they're using for different reasons. So this, I got it from book, was an amazing way to, you know, put things together or an amazing way to see how different segments or different departments having the same supply chain data and they require that same information right throughout. Okay. Now, when we're speaking about all of these, there are certain things or processes that require high level of oversight or that require information from various departments, such as your design, sourcing, marketing, and finance. So a silo approach wouldn't work, but at the same time, it also needs um, aspects like key performance indicators. I'm sure you would have all heard about it at work or what we call as KPIs. 
So what are these KPIs? They are basically a sort of quantitative information um, that is about monitoring and tracking progress, okay? For supply chain management, um, these KPIs are important. Why? Because they are merely metrics that can help management determine the important points of information. KPIs are also something that enable management to focus on different factors um, that are important in running a business um, that are about making informed decisions, that are about reducing cost and time as well. Now, KPIs also allow to benchmark performance by working with a set of common metrics over a period of time. So in terms of an apparel manufacturing perspective, KPIs will fall either as a financial perspective, it can fall as a customer experience, it can fall as an operating experience. So for example, for a retailer, a financial KPI would be about percentage of cost such as production or logistics. Um, then similarly, a KPI for customer experience will also be to predict the impact of production at a company level or KPI for operating performance is also important to enable the management to potentially minimize uh, defects around products or to train workers on real time with regard to production concerns. So again, overall KPIs are invaluable way for managers to increase their company intelligence through um, consistently monitoring results okay this is just an example of a kpi it is basically um, providing leaders with insight into the performance of their business they provide data to analyze solve to define to implement and also to review organizational decisions so this is just how um, or what a kpi means to a company then we speak about inventory management data. Now, this is something which is almost second to the labor that is involved in a company because that is how much it costs to the retailer. So the counting and monitoring of inventory also becomes um, key focus areas in supply chain management analytics. Um, companies rely on inventory management systems to provide um, visibility to inventory levels to provide consumer demand, to provide um, stockouts or customer dissatisfaction or items that have been obsolete. All these informations can be gathered from the inventory management system. So retailers, they generally use inventory data to learn about um, customer buying habits or to able that and on knowing that that helps them to develop more accurate production forecasts in terms of where to determine what is the next big item that they need to make or what would be that next thing that a customer would be willing to own so that inventory management data also gives them sort of a future forecast of what could look like um, something new that would come up then we have big data now, as you can see in this image, it's all data that is going into our computers in our lives, not just now, but been like that for ages. So big data as such is a depiction of volume of information that is available within our reach, within our computer screen, because of the capabilities of big data to draw up multiple data sources. Um, so before we used to do it in silo categorically, but now everything is accessed and it is evaluated simultaneously. And that's the amazing part about big data. So as definition, big data is basically a collection of data from different traditional systems, such as your inventory management, point of sales, which sort of gives um, the company management a digital insight or gives some sort of online searches that enables retailers to maintain a more complex perspective on their inventory okay um, an example would be say your inventory management data that is used to monitor at various stages of the inventory you know um, what is the information about raw materials how much do we have how far is the work in progress um, finished goods and um, you know that was something that is monitored but with big data, it not just integrates it, but also it enhances the functionality of information 
Um, so an example, simplest way for you to understand big data would be, um, you know, today consumers, they can shop anytime, they can shop anywhere. And this data is key to servicing their needs. So, for example, before we, whenever we used to go buy a gadget, for example, a cell phone, we didn't know much about, we used to Google each and every information or we used to go read the, you know, information pack that comes with the box. Now, what do we do? We just type in, we just Google, um, we compare, we contrast, we evaluate and everything comes up in a nutshell information. So, we don't individually go read we don't compare we don't evaluate the system does it for us that is what big data is and that is what it does for companies so companies they can use this big data they create customer profiles um, and then on creating that they know what are the patterns of customer buying what trends do they like and then they sort of put all of these together and try making an assumption out of it which gives them a perspective of future forecast okay um, so your segregated information has become more aggregate um, or has, has become more uh, put together, if I can say in a simpler word. So this big data, it acts as a powerful resource because it can inform the retailers about marketing plans, what finances they need to consider, also store layout, what store environment needs to be, what is the life cycle of a consumer when it comes to buying, what are their buying patterns, is it every month, is it seasonal, is it Every, if it's every month, is it post um, end of month once the salary has been paid or is it just um, impulse? So many things that come up. Okay. Um, big data also simplifies data integration, which means um, the time that a manager would need to formulate a report is reduced to a higher extent because they can just merely put information together and then gather report out of it. Um, we have spoken about RFID, but because it's part of a data um, management system, so I thought I'll just speak quickly about it. We know about RFID. It is um, available and it's also used by most apparel manufacturers since almost half a century. Um, and then it has been gaining popularity since then as it's an man um, information management tool where retailers use it. Um, and they use to manage volumes of inventory. They use to manage inventories with different stock keeping units and different variations as well. So what happens is by just merely using a chip, a retailer is able to track um, the mill in which the material is coming from, the factory that is responsible for cutting and sewing, the cargo vessel that bought the garment to its market, the warehouse where the item is stored, and the store or e-commerce distribution point that received the item. So it's almost like having the GPS for a piece of clothing, okay? Um, and also RFID, it gives retailers some insight about the time that is required um, to produce goods. It is also about the cost impact that it might have due to delays um, with various batches and the geographical location of the inventory. So this is basically um, like we say, a one-stop shop, it's like a one-stop information that can be um, gathered very quickly using RFID. Then, moving on to data collection. So, we've been discussing the use of data throughout until now. But in order to use the data, one must first collect the information. So, data collection needs to be accurate. It needs to follow the timeliness. Otherwise, you cannot collect at any point of time and still think of it as an appropriate mode of data collection. And at the same time, the reporting that happens, it needs to be standardized as well. Why? Because this standardization will enable multiple users to access information and will also reduce the amount of time needed to collect the data. Okay, so two of them are examples which are dashboard and balanced scorecards. These are examples of data collection methods that support increased flow throughout the supply chain. Now we speak a bit about each of them. Now this is just an image of a dashboard. Um, dashboard basically something that captures KPIs in a central visual image to sort of quickly give the management an overall understanding of a business performance. So this is just something I took it from an online platform just to show you that this is what a dashboard looks like. Any kind of information, numbers, graphs, 
um, finances, duration, you you name it. Everything is present on a dashboard. So it's easy for a management team to make a call quickly um, with regard to the demand or with regard to the performance of the business. So definition-wise, it's a user-friendly, it's a visual representation of KPIs that informs the management quickly about the performance of either a process or a function. And as um, you saw in the previous uh, slide about the image of how it looks, it sort of centralizes information um, into a common um, agreed upon format of a reporting format, which can be shared with multiple people or multiple individuals on a real time, be it either internal or external to the organization. Okay. Now for management, they need to react quickly. Um, in terms of consumer requests, in terms of design defects, in terms of production modifications, and also projected inventory levels. So for them, having a dashboard is amazing because it can automate the process. Um, it can significantly reduce the speed and evaluation time that is needed. Um, it can also better production decisions. And having a dashboard, it also sort of helps in making sure that the work that has been done in advance can be visible. So time that is spent on analyzing the data versus collecting it becomes quicker. Okay. And dashboards as such, they also um, increase the visibility um, and also at the same time, the cost that is involved when it comes to supporting data gathering. gathering sorry. Um, yeah, that's all about dashboard and it helps managers to make better and quicker production decisions. Um, then we speak about balanced core cards. Before we speak about it, let me just go ahead and show you a quick example of a balanced core card document. Um, if you see in this document, it has three things. Um, critical success factors, it has operational targets and it has status of the business critical success factors. Now the scorecard here, it provides management with vendor up updates on operating performance. Now again, this was something that was taken from a textbook, but what is a balanced scorecard? It is basically a strategic performance management tool. It is a way to create, um, a, sorry, a way to monitor how an internal department or a vendor's performance is operating relative to who? Relative to a retailer's operational and even company's goals and objectives. Okay. Um, the scorecards, they utilize visualize, visualization to document progress and identify categories of focus. So it sort of becomes a user-friendly information layout. It supports ease of use and it is consistent when it comes to information, but also it ensures access to a broad range of company metrics. Okay, so companies often require their vendor partners to use this balance scorecards companies they also tend to use the scorecards to access compliance um, in areas when it comes to sustainable manufacturing processes for example um, companies also have used balance scorecards to maximize profits and how do they do that they look closely at costs they try to optimize uh, resource allocation they try to evaluate bottlenecks and any kind of improper resource management and also try to identify product defects or if there is any miscommunication and on addressing to these things, they have a proper effective balance scorecard. So as such, it is a great amount of information from multiple internal department vendors and companies are also able to manage multiple areas of concern and opportunity. So as you can see in this figure here, it sort of says, what is a success, critical success factor? Obviously say for example, business benefit. Now to have a business benefit, it needs to take care of its first priority, which is customers. So how do they reduce it? Um, how do at the, the, at the same time increase the market share? And what is the status? Obviously this picture was black and white. So that would mean color coding, okay? If it is on track, if it is, um, imagine like a traffic signal, green, yellow, and red. If it is on track, if it is somewhere, you know, dwindling and it needs to go back to on track or if it is on danger mode, so they work accordingly. So these balance scorecards, they align um, with the long-term visionary goals of the organization 
and with the daily processes that goes on in order to get the work done okay it also gives management some sort of a reality in terms of how their company is um, performing and in relation to their vision as well so scorecards has been widely used and considered in companies to give a apt response to what they need or expect um, so in conclusion because we see our customers today are moving constantly towards value fashion or to what we call as fast fashion to unique styles and they need um, their own niche customer delivery options so a retailer supply chain has to achieve all of these and in order to achieve this information is important and the way information is um, shared saved and interpreted is equally important as well okay thank you